today to celebrate him. Thank you so much for joining Joni and me. We always love coming yes. into your home. Tell us about our guest today. Well, we're delighted to have a father and son team today, right. Mark and Danny Bradley. They're both NFL football players. All you Texans, don't hold it against them, but they were Oklahoma Sooners too in a former life. And they have an incredible story and they've written a book together entitled Inseparable and their lives have mirrored that title. It's quite amazing. Well, it is an incredible story and there's a book that chronicles the story entitled Inseparable. And that title is so apt in describing Mark and Danny Bradley's lives. And uh, they're here to tell us the story. I know a lot of you Texans fans just keep watching. It's okay. They're Oklahoma Sooners. <laughs> the Lord loves Oklahoma Sooners too. Yes, He does. And they've been doing better than Texas over the last few years. <laughs> so <laughs> He must really like them. Let's welcome the Bradleys. Okay, Thank so this you. is Danny. This is Mark. I got it right. And before we talk about your story, who, uh, Mark, were you pulling for in the Super Bowl? Oh man, I, I have to stay neutral. Um, but I kind of, I kind of had a feeling that uh, New York was going to pull it out. You did. Oh, okay. What about okay, you, Dad? Danny. Who were you pulling for? As an NFL agent, I must remain neutral. So <laughs> it does not matter. It, I tell you what, it's the kind of game that you like to see in the Super Bowl. It that was a great from, game, wasn't it? Awesome. I mean, it come down to the very last play. Absolutely. And the two best teams yeah. were in the Super Bowl. That's what you want. Okay. Now, I'm going to find out some vital statistics because I love all this <laughs> 40 times and stuff. So let's find out. So, Danny, what was your fastest 40 time growing up? 4-4. Uh, four, four. Which is very, very fast. And, Mark, what was your fastest? I don't recall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, the fastest 40 time recorded, I mean, his handheld was 425. Oh my goodness. But officially 43, somewhere around there. So do you realize that in the history of the NFL, somewhere around 4.2 <laughs> is the fastest ever? And some, there's, there's dispute about whether uh, Deion Sanders, who's been a guest on this program, was the fastest or Chris Johnson recently. But when you start getting four, anything four, four and under is just, is just blazing fast. So, Danny, let's, let's start with you. Here you are. Uh, you go and you visit your parents' home. And uh, you are told that you may have a child. You may have a son. And you didn't know anything about it. So that would have to be an incredible shock to you. How did you find this out? Actually, at the time, we were two games, we were two days away from the 85 Orange Bowl game, the national title game in Miami, when the phone call came in. Now, who did Oklahoma play in that game? University of Washington. Okay. And uh, so it was, uh, it was a real dim time for me. I, I knew the accusation could possibly be true. And, uh, but I didn't know at that time if they were. And uh, I was just months away from the NFL draft and months away from marrying my college sweetheart. So it was not as the proper time, I guess you would receive such a phone call, but uh, it was a very, very difficult time being a quarterback at the University of Oklahoma, playing in the biggest game of your life. Uh, you get such a phone call uh, can really, really, really be a really difficult time. So how did that affect you here in this news? Because it had to be a shock to you. Uh, my life, I just, you know, I didn't have a dad uh, that represented the kind of image that, uh, you, that God wants us to represent. I didn't have a father to exemplify uh, those character traits. Uh, I come from a domestic violent home. Uh, my dad was a wonderful man of God today. We have a great relationship, but I didn't grow up in a household where I had that image of God inside the home. So I didn't have a perspective on how to do this. Uh, but uh, going let me that, let me interject something here because sometimes fathers didn't have the role model themselves. Absolutely. And I'm not saying I don't know the case with Danny's father, but. We don't all want to say every time That's, that the father was a bad guy right. because sometimes he doesn't know any better That's because good. maybe that's the way he was raised. Sure, so that was sure. the example or the image that he had. That's right. That's right. So I want to say that on behalf and of the father. And that's true for my father. He, you know, he lost his mom at 
the age of five, at 16, he discovered that the woman that had raised him was his older sister. So oh, wow. he was an that angry man and just, uh, yeah. it was a difficult time for him and uh, bless his heart, it just took him a while to get it together. But going into that game, I knew that life would never be the same for me uh, because I was driven to be the dad that I never had. Uh, I just knew that I did not want to represent what my father in those formative years had represented to me. Uh, so after that game, I, I, we had a chance to talk uh, and we did as much PI in as we possibly could. But at that time, Mark had a father for which we call in the book his birth certificate father. And uh, he had a life. So, and at the time, she wasn't being as forthright with information. So we just kind of chalked it up as just an accusation, uh, trying to piggyback off the, the, the soon to be success. How old was uh, he at that point when you first? Uh, about two and a half years old at that time. And my second year with the Rams, uh, I got a phone call during training camp from my mother um, who had alarmed me and warned me that, uh, at least alarmed me that uh, this kid had sustained at five at this time, a gunshot wound, right. self-inflicted. And uh, that oh disturbed me so much. I just, I, I jumped on a plane, left LA, because I was at the Rams at the time, and uh, flew to Arkansas, uh, just praying, hoping that I could get her to submit to a blood test and uh, a paternity test. And lo and behold, she did. And uh, the test came back uh, a few weeks later, uh, documenting that the young man was, this kid was indeed my son. And for me, life would never be the same. Um, uh, I lost my wife in the process of it um, after giving an ultimatum that it's either the marriage or your son. Oh and my. I just chose to make the decision that I felt like the Lord wanted me to make. And that's take the responsibility and uh, knowing that our kids are our assignment. And I saw this as an opportunity to be uh, that father to a kid. It came at a, you know, probably the most inopportune time. Uh, I was on the brink of an NFL career. Um, just a couple of years later, I walked away from the game uh, after being extended a two-year contract with the Detroit Lions at that time uh, to be a father to this kid that I wow, didn't know. So, and, and that's kind of how it all began for us. Okay, so Mark, in America and other countries as well, but fatherlessness and absentee fathers is, is really a crisis situation. And if somebody's never been through that, they can't imagine how that affects a child not having his father there to be that role model and that image. How, what kind of impact did that have on you growing up? Um, I actually had four daddies in this story. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Wow, that's had, a lot. <laughs> uh, I had a birth certificate father. I had a, a stepfather, my grandfather trying to pursue the role of being a father. And I had a father who had all rights. And, you know, the other fathers that, that I had in my life um, were supporting the, the separating of my father. Uh, my grandfather, bless his heart, just didn't have the tools and understand what he was doing. And my father that I have now has, has been a tremendous blessing in my life, but it affected me as far as getting to know my father tremendously um, because I had those people in my ear and always trying to aid my mother in this, 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 this thing that was keeping us separated. So it, it affected us tremendously, man. And, and I'm happy that my father was successful in being consistent in love, consistent in forgiveness, over 20 plus years uh, so that we may have this relationship that we have now. That's wonderful. And I'm thankful also that he was persistent in helping me with my mother. Me and my mother have started to build that relationship that we never had. That's great. And so he not only just pulled me out with love, he's helped me start this relationship with my mom. So I'm. I'm thrilled about that. She does a wonderful job. I, I love her to death Aww. just as much as I love my father. That's wonderful. That in the, in, the, in the end of the book, she does a wonderful job of sharing her heart, um, basically sharing that, you know, what I did to you was, to my dad was wrong. And what I told you at 
uh, five years old that your dad went off to play college football, didn't want to have anything to do with you, was just a lie. Mark, is that why you took a gun? Did you shoot yourself at five? What happened? Tell us about that, because you mentioned about the, the gunshot and self-inflicted. What happened there? Actually, I, I believe that was a blessing in itself, because not if, if that didn't happen, I might not have met this man, because they said I might need blood to survive. So. Well, were you trying to harm? Were you trying to harm yourself? Were you just playing with the gun? No, I wasn't. Yes, I was just playing with the gun. And back home, you know, Fourth of July, some people go out and shoot guns, and my grandfather did that. And I followed him into the house, and you know, playing around, and um, they told me to go play. And I remember when my grandfather placed a gun, and I went back there, and wow. playing with the gun, and it went off, and which a lot of kids do that kind of yes. stuff at that age especially yes. you know one of the things that uh, the week of uh, Valentine's we do the mission marriage you know we have the panel we had David and Tamala Mann on with us from Meet the Browns and one of the things they talk about because they have a blended family is how important it is to work together with all of this support system that you're talking about that what it would do for for kids sure. if we would all work together to love one another Amen. and support yeah, one for another the child's best versus you know, early on having that conflict, it would have probably made your life so much easier early on if everyone would have said, we want to do what's good for Mark. Absolutely. And the fact that you didn't know about his conception, his birth, you know, and I, I think that that's important that, that transparency and honesty also be a part, you know, of the child's life. So, okay, so you work through um, meeting your dad and, and through so many different issues. Um, as you're growing up as a teenager, tell, tell us what was going on with you then, Mark. Well, I was, I was caught in between this love-hate relationship, Marcus and Johnny. My, my father exemplified love from the day I met him. Uh, my mother had this vendetta towards my father, and that's what I knew from the time she told him that he was my father. And so I was torn in between that that led me to, led, led me to thoughts of suicide. Oh. Drugs and alcohol when I got older. And it was tough. The but devil wanted to destroy you, didn't he, Mark? But God but was faithful. But, but I'm thankful for the consistency of my father because I might be dead today if it wasn't for him. Mm. And, you know, the story is not about the many mistakes my mom made. It's about my father showing me what the image of God is. Yes. yes. That I may have life. Yes. And I want to share the story because I have life now. Amen. It's wonderful. And he's turned my life totally around through my father. Mm. And so Again, thank you for, for being consistent in your love, your humility, your kindness, your patience. So, I, I mean, it, it was a tough deal. But the person who struggled the most in his whole story was my father. Yeah. Knowing the injustice, seeing it, when I don't understand as a kid, I can go to sleep at night. I don't know you know, what he was dealing with as a father, knowing that what they were doing were wrong. I may have known, I may have seen it as, you know, that what they're doing to my father is wrong. What I'm doing to my father is wrong, because I participated in the Slanders Acts too. I put out there that my father was a deadbeat dad. I said things because I grew up in that environment. Yeah. That's what I heard, that's what I, I believe. You know, I, I, and when I think about it, man, the. I don't know really what to say about the persistence of the love, but what I can say is, you know, the love that I have for my mother kept me in bondage. And let me, let me just inter let me say this right quick because we're running out of time. Mark said something so important, and the times when I've had the occasion to preach on Father's Day, I always say this: Our earthly fathers are our first image of the heavenly Father. 
So, men, that's why what you do, your role, is so very important. Yes. That consistent love that Mark was talking about, that his father portrayed to him, that's the way our father is, our heavenly father. So, fathers, we got to get that right. Joni? We do. I want to say to Mark, you know, your name means mighty warrior. And God's got great destiny ahead for you. Even yes. if you have the transparency to share your story. And to have that tender heart. Yes, I, that's what I was going to say. Don't, don't ever that. lose that tenderness that God will so use that. Amen. But there's two groups of people watching right now. There are people who you're the father and you've listened and you've thought, you know what? Um, I don't know, for whatever reason, I've thought that my kids really didn't maybe need me. I've just kind of pushed it back in the back of my mind thinking, you know, it is just such a bad situation. I don't want to get involved. And just through the story today, I believe the Holy Spirit is touching your heart and your mind to get involved in your child's life. That's the first group of people that's watching. So you be obedient to that and you do what, what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do and ask God to open a door so you can be a part of your child's life. Yes, yes it is important. It is so important. Amen. Secondly, there are children watching that you have not forgiven your father. I mean, there are children that are so bitter over the fact that their Some father... Some of them are even grown now and still haven't forgiven Oh, yeah, their, most of them father. are grown. And, and you haven't forgiven your father because he was not a part of your life or he didn't do the right thing or he didn't tell you that he loved you and he wasn't there and he wasn't at the ball games or the recitals or, you know. And you know who you are. Well, I want to say to you today... Release your father today and forgive yes, him. Yes, yes. And allow the Holy Spirit to begin to do a work in your heart and just see what God will do as far as reconciliation is concerned. But whether it happens or not, I'm telling you, it's so important that you release him to the Father and begin to pray to the Heavenly Father for your earthly father, for your stepfather, for whoever that father figure is in your life. And today, if you want us to pray with you, go to the phone right now and, let, good, and let us pray with you. Go to the phone right now and call. And you don't have to leave your name, but just say, you know what, I'm, I'm one of those groups of people that you're talking about today. And it really ministered to me. And I want to forgive. And fathers, I want to reach out to those kids that I've forgotten because it's not too late. Well, it's no accident that Danny and Mark Bradley are here today. And it's no accident or coincidence that you're yes. watching. Amen. This was a yes. divine setup from the Lord. He loves you today. And He yes. wants to heal. He wants to restore. He wants to renew. Amen. And He can do that if you'll just let Him. Joni wrote a book about surrender. You Amen. just have to surrender these Amen. things to the Lord and ask Him and He will do it. The book is inseparable. We didn't have time to tell you. There's a neat little story. There's a 16 in the... Uh, the title there, I suppose they both wore number 16, but it's a neat story and you need to read the book. It's a real story. And uh, it, this is something that people that wouldn't listen to a preacher, they would read this book and it'd have an impact on them. Two NFL football players and their true life story. So a lot of people would want, would want to read it. So there is the, the website. Uh, I'm sure you can probably get it on amazon.com as well. But anyway, go to that website and you can get the book and pray for Danny, pray for Mark, that God will continue to use them and use their story for the glory of God.